the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome once again to the Mass that we celebrate together this Wednesday morning. Welcome. We'll meet another prophet. Elijah passes on the mantle of prophethood to Elisha, his disciple. We have a lovely entrance hymn. Its number and its name is... 548. Oh, praise ye the Lord. Praise him in the height. Good. <laughs> to mind our sins, knowing of God's desire to forgive us, to forgive rather than to punish, to redeem us. You were sent to hear the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in this wonderful sacrament, you have left us a memory of your passion. Grant that we may so reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience within ourselves the effects of your redemption, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now we hear the story of Elisha receiving the gift of prophecy. We can say that the Old Testament is a story of kings versus prophets, prophets versus kings, because prophets speak out prophemy, they speak for God, and they call out the greed and the selfish lifestyles of those people in high places. It's a case of truth speaking to power. Let's listen. A reading from the second book of the Kings. This is what happened when the Lord took Elijah up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elijah and Elisha set out from Gilgal. Elijah said, Elisha, please stay here. The Lord is only sending me to the Jordan. But he replied, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. And they went on together. Fifty of the brotherhood of prophets followed them, halting some distance away as the two of them stood beside the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water and the water divided to left and right, and the two of them crossed over dry shod. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, make your request, what can I do for you before I am taken from you? Elisha answered, let me inherit a double share of your spirit. Your request is a difficult one, Elijah said, if you see me while I am being taken from you, it shall be as you ask. If not, it will not be so. Now, as they walked on, talking as they went, a chariot of fire appeared and horses of fire coming between the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in the whirlwind. Elisha saw it 
and shouted, My father, my father, chariot of Israel and its chargers. And then he lost sight of him. And taking hold of his clothes, he tore them in half. He picked up the cloak of Elijah, which had fallen, and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the cloak of Elijah and struck the water. Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? he cried. He struck the water and it divided to right and left and Elisha crossed over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we listen to the, the responsorial psalm. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Let, Let your, your heart, heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Lord. How great is the goodness, Lord, that you keep for those who fear you, that you show to those who trust you in the sight of man. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plotting of men. You keep them safe within your tent from disputing tongues. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. Love the Lord, all your sins, he calls his faithful. But the Lord will repay to the full those who act with pride. Let your heart take courage, all who hope in the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. In the Gospel today Jesus is very blunt. We should do acts of charity, we should pray, fast, give alms, but do it in silence, do it quietly. As Pascal said, golden deeds kept out of sight are most praiseworthy. Jesus said to his disciples, be careful not to parade your good deeds before men to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win men's admiration. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your almsgiving must be secret, and your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers, standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room. And when you have shut the door, pray to your father who is in that secret place. And your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. And when you fast, do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They put long faces to let people know that they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that no one will know you are fasting except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We ask God to bless these few words. 
when somebody does an act of kindness, especially if they're feeling a bit down, you know, and it's completely unexpected, and there's no way that we can repay them, sometimes you get a bit emotional. You know, such an act of kindness touches our hearts. So here's my little story, if you will bear with me. In June 2008, two months before I came to this lovely parish, I was off watching birds. And this is my great interest, as you've gathered, in life. And I wanted to go to the Tien Shan Observatory, way up there in the mountains, and to stay for a few days. But the bus stopped seven kilometres short, and there was me stranded. It was late at night, it was getting dark, so a couple spotted me, a mother and a daughter, and they invited me to stay in their home. And these people were secular Muslims. Muslims, they didn't go to the mosque, they didn't read the Quran, they didn't know who the local imam was. She was a doctor, the father was an engineer, he was away working, I didn't meet him. There were two sons who were motor mechanics, and there was a daughter who was a pharmacist. And I kind of felt that the parents were a bit disappointed in the two sons. They were happy, they loved tinkering about with cars, but I think the parents had hoped they were going to one or other of the professions, maybe medicine or engineering. So here is me, a Catholic priest. Technically, I am an infidel. Technically, I am a non-believer. And the mother said to me, we know all about the Catholics, she said. And I said, what do you know? She said, oh yes, uh, you have a Pope and you speak Latin. So I said, would you like me to teach you some Latin? So I taught them the Latin grace before meals. It goes, Ocli omnium in te sperant domine, et tu desilis escam in tempere opportuno. It's lovely words. All eyes look to you with hope, O Lord, and you give them food in due time. I wrote it down, and we said it before every meal. They were lovely. They wouldn't take any money, but I left 30 euros every day on the table. They set me up with a bird watcher. We went together to the Tian Shan Observatory and we stayed there for three days. He was a Russian, he was ex-military, and this was now his profession. He was a professional ornithologist. It was wonderful. And I believe that somewhere in Kazakhstan, maybe, maybe, there's a family of Muslims, and every time they eat, they take out that little piece of paper. Why not? And they say, Ocali omnium in te sperant domine. All eyes, O oh Lord, look to you with hope. You give us food in the appointed time. And I thought, I was a stranger, and you made me welcome, Jesus says. In Matthew's Gospel, I was a stranger, and you made me welcome. They drove me to the airport, and in the queue, I looked, and here's the mother weeping. Wow, very touching. So three virtues Jesus teaches us today. To pray, to give alms, to fast, and all of these actions, without any, without any hope of an earthly reward, charity, or the equivalent of alms, what the family had done for me. All of it must be undergirded, Jesus tells us, with humility. Never, Jesus says, boast about your acts of charity. Never let people see your piety, your fasting, and your life of prayer. God sees and judges and rewards. If we are praised on earth, we have already received our reward. And I think that's the most difficult of all the virtues. To give money away is dead easy, I think. But to, to be humble when you do it, don't let anybody suspect anything. We all went to, want to do well. We all want to succeed. And it's part of our nature. In the past, when a young priest was ordained, members of the congregation might shout out a little, little Latin tag. It was adult siora, adult siora. And it meant, go higher, go higher, young priest, go higher. Not just a simple priest, adult siora, become a canon, a dean, a messenger, even a bishop. Higher, higher. Well, the reality is today that we are humbled by this special privilege to help people on their lives journey. 
So I say to young people, succeed in life, be successful, you know, but if you don't have the heart of that Samaritan on the road to Jericho, uh, remember that the two people who passed by were people who drew their salaries from the church, uh, from the temple, from the pennies of poor widows, a priest and a Levite. If we don't have the heart of that Samaritan who picked up the man, paid for his medicine, then we've forgotten why we are here on earth. Pascal said it already, Pascal, golden deeds kept out of sight are the most praiseworthy. In a bit of prayers, we pray for Mary Kennedy and uh, their family watching this morning. She's 74 years of age. She has surgery today, described as a lovely sister, wife, mother, grandmother. So for Mary Kennedy, we pray for success in her operation. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, and we think of other people who've been in touch. We think of Jackie. Better yesterday, here she is out buying flowers. We pray for her today. And we also pray for the spirit of Elijah and the spirit of Elisha, that we may also side with those people who are humiliated, with those people who suffer any injustice at the hands of what we call powerful people. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. And we invite our Lady into our hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We have a lovely offertory hymn. It is in you. My God, may your soul find its rest. It is number 369, 369. <laughs> of gel just to help to keep us safe. Blessed are you Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, <coughs> which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. And Lord, wash away all my iniquities and cleanse me, Lord, 
from all of my sins. And pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace. Those signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings which we present here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift your hearts the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty of salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, he fulfilled your will, and again for you, a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Be holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, I doubted willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once for giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. And let us proclaim together the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. In turn, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. I remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. And bring us to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, with you our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them, Lord, into the light of your face. And have mercy in us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 And we pray with great confidence to the Father, using the words which Jesus, who is our Saviour, taught us. Our Father, who art in Lord, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all anxiety, as you await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your sister. Let us offer each other a sign of peace, and peace be with you. Everybody watching at home prayerfully, peace be with you. Jesus, Lamb of God, bread of life for us, Jesus, Lamb of God, wine of joy for us, Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away all the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We have a lovely prayer for those people who cannot receive Jesus today sacramentally, but would like to receive him spiritually. An act of spiritual communion. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. As the sacrament is now exposed in the monstrance and Jesus waiting to converse with anyone who wishes. We have a lovely communion hymn. O Lord, hear my prayer. Number 82 is a tazy chant. <laughs> The communion antiphon. Since you are children of God, God has sent into your hearts the Spirit of His Son, the Spirit who cries out, Abba, Father. We thank God in a moment of precious silence for His fatherhood. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. May our reception of this sacrament, O Lord, we pray, bring us health of body and of soul. As we confess your eternal holy trinity and your undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear people, we meet again tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning. The Mass has also been saved and stored in the section called Videos in the Parish Bulletin for anybody who could manage to watch, but would like to watch it later. In the meantime, I hope you'll enjoy the day as best you can, and for everyone watching, God bless. We have a lovely final hymn. Lord of all hopefulness, Lord of all joy, is number 450. Lovely if you can sing it at home.
and blessed of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, come down upon me, your unworthy servant, upon the people watching prayerfully at home, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.